Hello, welcome everyone to The Distraction here on Fightful.com. I am Jeremy Lambert, the flu game, flu game Lambert for this one. With me, Joe Holbert. Joe, how you doing, buddy? I'm good. There's, you know, it's interesting. I felt like it's been a long time since we spoke, but then we just spent 10 minutes trying to scrabble together some topics. So I don't know if a lot happened or none happened, but, you know, here we are, another week. I'm looking forward to it, man. I was on my deathbed on Tuesday. Yes, the flu I, guy. Yeah, I my body just like completely shut down. I had like a 101 fever and just I couldn't do anything. It was it was dire times, Joe. Dire times. Would you, but I'm here. Would you blame this on Super Showdown? <laughs> because maybe. I think you know you have a case to be honest with you. You know, maybe maybe I yeah. will blame this on Super <laughs> Showdown. <laughs> I don't know, it happened after Raw. Maybe I'll blame it on Raw, because that's when I started mm-hmm. to get sick, was like right after Raw. Blame it on uh, on uh, Ricochet losing to Riddick Moss. Yeah, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm pro Riddick Moss. Long-term fans of mine will know that I actually like endorsed him about 25 years ago in NXT. So um, I'm happy for Riddick Moss, and I have no further comment on the person that he beat. Okay, that's where I'm at right now. Uh, everyone subscribe to Fightful Select. You get extra news, exclusive news on top of that. Extra audio, early access to, to columns, early columns by, by Joe, even though he was lazy this week and didn't write about Elimination Chamber. I don't blame you. Yeah, um, I, took, I had to take a week. I had to. It was too much. WrestleMania will be a lot, though. I always try to bring a lot for WrestleMania, so... If you have anyone you want me to try about WrestleMania, tell me, because I will actually try this time. I have a lot of slots to fill, you know? And FightfulSelect.com, best way to support everything we do on Fightful. Fightful.com, all your wrestling, boxing, MMA needs. If you just want wrestling, FightfulWrestling.com. Joe, let's get into it. The gimmick on the distraction. We set five minutes on the clock. We always go over the five minutes, and we don't always stick to the topic that we initially introduce. That's how this works. We're very matching today, I just noticed. We're both wearing white shirts, and we've got messy facial We're like hair. We're a real tag team, bro. We're <laughs> finally starting to. Now that we know the gimmick's getting over, we can commit to like getting gear in, you know, and really commit to our look. So, yeah, it's good. Uh, we're we're going to start with something that I was very fired up about when it initially happened, but I am just so under the weather that I don't know how much energy I can commit to this. But John Cena returned on SmackDown. He cuts this promo of... As I, I get a notification on Skype that just popped up. He cuts this promo of... I'm not going to be at WrestleMania because, you know, it's going to be reserved for the young guys. Like, that's how we're going to do it. The the young guys are going to get the spot, and that's how it's going to be. So I'm sorry, WrestleMania is still going to be great, but I'm not going to be there. And then The Fiend comes out, and he points to the WrestleMania sign, and John Cena tips his cap, and then it's announced we're getting Cena and The Fiend at WrestleMania. Joe, has this company just lost the ability to tell any kind of story? Yeah. Probably. Well, look, this is just the latest in a long trend where they sacrifice, like, individual images and moments over, like, a long... This was, like, multiple weeks of TV. But they wanted that shot of The Fiend pointing, and they got it, so... I'm surprised you got fired up based to be honest with you, Jeremy. I had I had no reaction to it. But sure, man. I get it. This this was odd, right? Like Cena was so firm on his young talent push, right? He was all in on it. And then just one point, and that was the end of that. <laughs> that was it. He was he's on WrestleMania, so I don't know. It's tough. I I have no like excitement for this match at all, but I appreciate that you worked up some energy about it and was fired up about it. At least she was a week ago. I, you know, I don't know how much you can get out of it now, but yeah, I get I, your frustrations. I do. I talked to, I went to this event on Sunday and it was just this thing with my wife and I, t- I was talking to this gentleman. He's a lapsed fan. He big fan years ago. Now, mm-hmm. like he doesn't watch it at all, but he was flipping through the channels on Friday. He saw SmackDown. He saw Cena. He's like, oh, I'll check this out. He listened to Cena's promo, and then he, he tells me, 
then I see this goofy looking clown come out and he says this doughy he called him doughy so I saw this doughy clown come out and he points to the ring he's like I thought they were going to wrestle right then and then Cena tips his cap and then they just go off the air and he's like I I didn't understand this at all and I was just like I like I'd explain it to him like yeah they're doing the match at Wrestlemania he's like well why did Cena say he wasn't going to be on the show and then he decides he's going to be on the show it's like dude I don't have an answer for you like I really don't have it this was weeks of storytelling like, yeah we the fiend just comes out one day after losing the universal title looks at Cena and just he points he does he does a stupid point and then that's it like what happened to the fiend that attacked everybody like why yeah. can't the fiend just attack Cena for I guess he can only attack him for one week because Cena's not gonna be there every week but just attack him shoot some vignettes like have Bray do the fun house where he's like goading Cena into all this stuff and then Cena agrees to this match like the just weeks of storytelling just so they can do this stupid point and this <laughs> hat tip and and they can announce I it's so I, I don't understand it. And it was the same thing with the, the Street Profits winning the titles on Monday. It's like, oh, we've worked our whole life for like you guys have had four title shots in the past month. Like what do you mean you've worked all your life for this month? This is not your first title shot. I tweeted the like, WWE is great at creating moments. Yeah. Awesome. At creating moments that just look good on headlines, look good on gifts and stuff. They don't tell stories anymore. They they've completely lost that that art of wrestling. I think maybe the business has changed, Jeremy. To be honest, <laughs> because I I'm looking at Wrestle, WrestleMania to me. Once upon a time, right now, back in the day, you would have like there'd be one match on WrestleMania that was like it didn't have a lot of story to it, but it was the designated sort of this is just going to be a cool match thing. Does that make sense? Like there was like one of them. And now it feels like there's a whole card of them and then there's one or two like actual conflicts that need settling at WrestleMania. SmackDown was a, as a show where they booked two WrestleMania matches that previously had absolutely no like story, link or build whatsoever. Like Roman Reigns just came out and said, I'm going yeah. to fight you at WrestleMania. And Bill was like, yes. And then the other one was the point, which you know, you've said enough about. So that's a i think that's a real problem man they're making matches for mania that look cool on a poster but do you actually care who wins in these matches there's no conflict there right it's it's an odd evolution of how they do these shows i think no not not at all the roman reigns thing was was just as dumb but at least roman Mm. didn't you know at least goldberg didn't cut a promo saying i'm not going to be on mania and stuff roman roman honestly after his year-long feud with corbin deserves a title shot uh yes. so so i'm for that but yeah there's no history between roman and goldberg the no. only match that look Orton and edge is going to be great i'm looking forward to that at least there's a real story behind yeah. that and something you actually want to see but really the only match that's been set up like past royal rumble was Shayna and becky which started before survivor series and even that's gone pretty cold because they're doing this whole chamber gimmick with Shayna where you know she's already going to win and stuff. Yeah. And like, I don't even, and Becky just doesn't feel like Becky anymore. I don't know what they're doing with her, but that's the only match where it's like some long term storytelling there. Everything else is just, hey, we're just setting this up right now just by, yeah. we're just doing this. I, yeah, I mean, I, I do agree with you in the sense that that we didn't need to see Roman win the chamber, right? So I don't think either of us have a problem with the whole deal of him just getting a shot. Could have been explained better. I think that's you know that's fair to say. I, I do think we would be very generous not to mention that last week on SmackDown they mentioned a woman's chamber and a male chamber and ended up with a tag chamber. I mean, that is, to me, insane. No one's even really mentioned it. They genuinely set up or referenced... Two matches that will now no longer take place, I assume, I guess, because instead we're doing a tag chamber, which was the only type of chamber <laughs> they didn't tease or reference. But anyway, I'm with you, man. I um, It feels indicative of how the, their products changed, and some people will like it. I personally don't really 
don't really enjoy the whole thing of just like cold matches that the story is you know guy said please wrestle me at wrestlemania it's kind of weird to me but that's that's where it's going but it does make the edge and randy stuff stand out more if you know there's a silver lining now i guess yeah th- that i mean that's a good point on the chamber stuff last week they have Lacey saying she's going to be in a chamber and she's <laughs> exactly. saying he's going to be on a chamber and it's like nah we're going to do a tag team chamber so it's like so you're not doing either they're doing four chambers or they just had some they just had Lacey and Sheamus talk about these chamber matches and it went nowhere like it's yeah. just the the long-term vision is just not there and if you can't recognize it by that by this point like I I don't know what to tell you because it, it's clearly not there they're clearly just doing what they want on a week-to-week basis and and that's just how they're going to keep doing things yeah that's why i mean we had a little joke to start the show but genuinely i mean i look i don't know what it's at now the chamber show i don't know what they've added stuff but i looked here on monday morning to try and figure out features and stuff and i was just like dude there's nothing here you know what i'm saying there's not i'm not going to try and force a lucha house party feature you know like <laughs> There's no story here. The tag teams are in this match because they want to do a chamber match and they don't have no idea which one to do. So the tags are going to get like a long match that no one asked for. And I'm sure it'll be good because all them teams are good. But the point is there's no actual, there's nothing there. There's nothing to latch onto. The other chamber match, we all know the winner of. I don't know, man. This pay-per-view is, is, has really been damaged by having the Saudi Arabia show the week before and stuff. It's just odd. It's a really weird situation. Well, let's get into the chamber. That's our next topic. Yes. It's this Sunday. That That's it all is. I can say about this show, is that it's this Sunday. Okay, so can we actually try to piece this together live on it? What is actually on this show, please? I, I, have... I have it pulled up. We do a great job okay. at, at Fightful, keeping the events updated. Um, I don't know what's closing this show. Like, I'm going to run down this card, and I, I can tell you what's probably closing this show. None okay. of this feels like something... If this was the uh, $40 pay-per-view days, like none of this feels like, yeah, I'm going to spend my $40 to, to buy this pay-per-view. So we've got the, the women's chamber match, Natalia, Liv Morgan, Baszler, Asuka, Ruby Riot, Sarah Logan. And we the winner is obvious here. We've mm-hmm. got the, the SmackDown tag chamber, Miz and Morrison, New Day, Heavy Machinery, Lucha House Party, Ziggler and Rude, and the Usos. Why, why'd the Usos just beat Miz and Morrison? one day after Miz and Morrison won the title. That's just what I do. This is the thing is there's, and I honestly think there's a lot of people that don't understand this is there's a certain way they do tag team wrestling that immediately makes it more prelim than any, like any other subdivision they have. Do you know what I'm saying? Like it's obviously cruiserweights. I get that. But like this on paper, if you look at these tag teams, a higher percentage of them are good teams. I'm not going to go through and name them because that's a topic I don't want to get into, but that is a perfect example of, can we not at least pretend for a day that the tag champs are like badass and awesome and they're the tag champs? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I know they cheated, but do we have to beat them immediately? Can they not get a day of kind of, yeah, but that's just, it's very, tag team wrestling WWE is very hard because it always feels like the end game will always be a four corners tag at WrestleMania or maybe a pre-show match. Like there's never any kind of, big tag match anymore right unless I, maybe i'm mistaken and i'm wrong about it but that's just how it always feels to me it feels like it's sometimes it will feel programming for them but it's never like an actual priority it's a shame because tag team wrestling can be awesome as we saw at the AEW pay-per-view you know we've got an intercontinental championship handicap match braun Shin, against shinsuke cesaro and Sami Zayn. i guess mm-hmm. they've sort of built this um <laughs> I, yeah. don't, I don't know. I have no interest in that. Match. No, I don't have. No. Raw tag team title rematch Street Profits against Rollins and Murphy. I feel like I've seen this match a hundred times already. And it really is the, the third time in just over a week we're going to see this match. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's so a lot. <laughs> a no DQ match AJ and Alistair Black. I don't know how AJ's shoulder is. He's clearly not working much to protect him in that regard. Like, he didn't really do much at Super Showdown, even though he um, was in the gauntlet match. And then they did the whole deal on Raw where he came in last after Black had already been destroyed. So, 
And yeah. I, don't know, I don't know how his shoulder is, and maybe that's why they're doing an ODQ to kind of smoke and mirrors things a little bit. But and they can have OC run in and all this other nonsense. Um, yeah. And then United States title Andrade against Humberto Carrillo. Yeah, I feel like I've seen this match a hundred times. And so AJ and Black are going to main event, I assume. I, I mean, maybe. I don't know. I, dude, I don't think you can close with them chamber matches. I honestly don't. I'm not even just like being the like cynical WWE guy. I just don't get, I don't sense any interest in them. At least AJ and Alistair Black is like a cool match. Assuming AJ can go, obviously. It's a cool match and you'll probably have The Undertaker appear yeah, as well. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that, that might end up closing. Like, again, just, I don't think you can... I think the women's chamber is going to close. I just don't see that as like a match that Baszler was super cold on Raw. That they've match got, with Kyrie, yeah, they've got to be careful with the Shayna Baszler thing because that main eventing could be the like a fatal blow to what's already struggling. Yeah, it's this card is just rough, like really yeah. rough. Yeah, I don't. Um... I, I don't want to keep going over old stuff, but I still don't quite get why Shayna had to debut when she did and why we couldn't have just done Becky in the chamber. And then after she gets through the chamber, Shayna debuts. I, don't, I, don't, I still don't understand why that wasn't a thing they did. But this is where we're at. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I, there's not a lot here that I want to see. In fact, there's nothing here that I'm desperate to see. Like, the way I always look at these cards is, if we got a notification now saying the match was cancelled, would I be bummed out about it? And there's not one match on this card I'd be upset to be cancelled. And that's not me being rude to the talent or mean it's not on them. But they've given me no reason to care about any of this. It's always very replaceable to me. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's like a super episode of Raw to me. There's no Roman. There's no... You don't have either of the, the champions. I mean, that's the problem when you just have two part-time champions. That's but, tough, yeah. Yeah. There's no women's title matches as of now. Like, I assume that. I, do you think they're going to do Bailey Naomi, or do you think we're going to do like a four way or some kind of? I assume we're going to do something with that. I don't get why we wouldn't at this point. I I don't know if they're waiting to a four way for for Mania. Like, there's nothing. I I don't know what their plans are. This is the thing. No, I don't. Yeah. Like, they're they haven't set up anything to where i feel comfortable in saying oh yeah they might even if you add like bailey and naomi like that's not even a match where you feel like it's a rematch from last week again yeah. so <laughs> like that's not yeah. even a match where you feel like really thrilled about seeing it's just i mean i think there's an argument you do like a four-way here and you use that to get to bailey and sasha right i think there's an argument you do a turn on sunday and then at least you have some talking points. You have The Undertaker. You have Sasha and Bailey being... I don't know, dude. I'm trying my best here. There's nothing here. Okay, we're, we're, we've given this enough time as it is. There's just nothing of interest here. And they haven't tried to make it interesting. It's, it's weird. I'm, I'm sure there's people that are interested in the women's training, but for me, it isn't, it isn't particularly interesting. I've given up on them doing Sasha and Bailey at WrestleMania. I just... Okay. I, until... I can't really lose because, to me, like... Either way, it's good content. Just what I'm saying. Like if they don't do it, it's just it's funny to me to just watch from that for far, you know. So I don't mind. But I agree with you. I understand why you'd give up on that until it's official and they're both in the ring. It's like uh, <laughs> it's like Tony Ferguson and yeah, Habib, exactly. Made of at this point, like yeah, even absolutely. if it's official, like they both got to be in the ring and the bell's got to ring because <laughs> somebody could trip over a cord backstage and tear an ACL with the yeah. history of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Let's let's move on to um, as I pull up my topics here. Let's move on to Randy and and Beth Phoenix. Randy Orton RKOing Beth Phoenix. I'm so over WWE programming. <laughs> it has just killed me this week. Look, this segment was great. Orton's promo was awesome. Colin Edge junkie for the roar of the crowd and everything. I, I thought he had a cup on when Beth kicked him because I thought she kicked him in the nuts. And I was like, man, he didn't sell that nut shot at all. But I guess he caught him in the, the stomach and then hit the RKO. Yeah. This is about the only WrestleMania match where it's like, all right, there's something of substance here that you feel like you want to see. I'm a little bit worried about our podcast, Jeremy, because I feel we're both at some form of war when it comes to WWE TV. So, 
Yeah, I'm look, I'm with you, man. I uh, I'm I've been skimming through these shows, but the Randy stuff like I always watch. I haven't got like a, the problem with it is 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 it's if there's one issue with it, I'm gonna acknowledge that it is a little bit silly that whoever is talking to Randy just stands in the ring on their own with him. I admit that's a little bit silly. Okay, fine, but it's wrestling. Let me enjoy myself. Is this the best promo Randy's ever cut, or do we not have any knowledge of his prior promos, or do we just don't remember him to actually give an opinion on that? I think it is the best he's ever done. And as far as recent memory, mm. I, I would say so. Um, his promos were fine in the Kofi feud. He, his promos were good in uh, the AJ feud. They were as yeah. well. So I, he just Randy, seemed he seemed to have a lot of like I don't know. He seemed he seemed very authentic here, and he he honestly seemed like a deeply troubled individual, <laughs> which was tremendous. I thought <clears throat> when Randy wants to i mean when randy's on he's on we we said it weeks ago like randy orton Mm -hmm. is your your favorite wrestler's favorite wrestler everyone loves this guy everyone speaks of just how great he is at at the little things and when he wants to turn it on there there's very few who are better than him i'm now worried about like this actual match though i think from a reaction standpoint it'll be good because it's edge's first singles match back and everything yeah. randy orton is good as his promos have been throughout kind of history and even like the the kofi stuff the aj stuff those matches were not good and randy orton works his one style and i just don't know if he can get out of that style I look i'm gonna be honest with you bro I'm, I'm worried about every mania match ever now <laughs> I'm going to do, I'm going to just use this as story time, okay? I attended, uh, I always forget the numbers now, the WrestleMania in New Orleans, the last one, not the Daniel Bryan one, okay? And that show was approximately 25 hours long, okay? And I had 1% battery on my phone, Jeremy. So after the Nia Alexa match, which I think was fourth from the top, I went on my phone and I saw a tweet in celebration. It says, considering what is left, this is now guaranteed to be an all-time WrestleMania. This was not a bad tweet. This was a fair tweet because all that was left was AJ and Shinsuke, Braun Strowman's mystery partner, and Brock and Roman. Now, I'm sorry to report to you, Jeremy, that none of those things were good, okay? And as I sat there watching AJ and Shinsuke wrestle to absolute silence, in my section it was silence. I've never watched it back. I don't know how it came across. No one was watching this match. And at that point, I just realized that Anything can die on a WrestleMania. Like, anything can. If this match goes on in hour seven, there's a very good chance it is not what we want it to be. I'm just going to be honest. Where Randy wrestles this way, that way. But with his style, it's even more likely. So, I uh, I totally share your fears. I have no faith in anything being good on this show because this, and it's not like a criticism thing. There's just so many circumstances, right? It is such a long show. I really think people forget this until they watch it. Like, there's a lot. On, there's going to be 15 matches probably, right? That's a lot. So it all depends on placement. That's actually a question. I, w- I was pondering this. Is that the main event of WrestleMania? No, they're headlining with uh, Drew and Brock. Really? Do you think? I'm I'm fairly certain they're going to headline with, with Drew how, and Brock. I would how many open minutes? with Orton okay. and Edge. That's, now, that's a good idea because the crowd... This is a match that relies on the crowd having an emotional interest, right? So the earlier it goes, the better chance it has to, to succeed. But how many minutes can Drew and Brock go? I don't know what Brock actually like wants to do anymore. So are we fine with just a five-minute main event? I am. I don't care. But I think I Drew and Brock... Is Brock and Roman went what? Uh, the one I was at, they went about tw- yeah. 15 minutes too long. <laughs> <laughs> and again, that's just because the audience had given up, right? So... Yeah, I I think they can go twelve minutes or so. Like I think they want to have, um, it drew the big closing shot with Drew having the title and being like the made guy on Raw and everything. You can't headline with with Roman and Goldberg. Like that's only got to go three minutes if that. And you're not I'm, headlining with that. I'm starting to think that I'm starting to fear that Drew's not going to win this belt, Jeremy. I'm going to be honest with you. 
I'm really starting to get that fear. <laughs> I a, really am. That's a valid fear because it seems like every time Brock is supposed to drop the title at Mania, yeah. they sign him to a new one-year deal worth eight million dollars. So. Yeah, I just I'm just getting more and more to fear. The the fear is for me is that they're going to do the thing where like he couldn't. He, I just don't want him to do that. He can't get over the hump thing. That's like the worst thing they could do here. But I wouldn't be surprised. I hope Drew just wins whether it's 12 minutes, 4 minutes, whatever it is. But I agree they can get a good match out of it. I just, Mania's weird. They've got like, there's like 10 possible co-main events on this on this card, but I, I'm still yet to see the match where I'm like, that's got to go last, right? Like, as much as the women's match divides people from last year, it was the main event of the show going in. You could tell it was the main event. So, Shayna and Becky's not main event in this show. So, yeah. Shayna and Becky's another one. You talk about matches that worry you, that one could be like, that could not be very good. Just because of again the circumstances, right? Nothing to me. like nothing feels hot in WWE right now. Like I think when Edge comes back, it will that angle will feel hot. But other than that, I agree with you. Yeah, I, sure. Edge coming back. I mean, his mania or Rumble return was fantastic, and yeah. he's been off television. That's how you can make things feel hot: is you keep guys off television for a couple of weeks, or you just mm-hmm. don't do the same match for every single week or you actually build new people and you don't just have to rely on Goldberg and Brock and Cena to come in and, and just do these stuff do this stuff. But even like the Goldberg and Cena stuff to me doesn't feel and I love John Cena, but yeah. I'm just I'm just not feeling the way I, they set all this up. I'm fi- I the the thing with this is I agree with everything you're saying and I always wonder if I'm just <coughs> like I'm too close to it or I'm in the bubble so to speak because I just don't care about any of it, you know. Like, and I, <laughs> and I, I know you're like me. You didn't care about Goldberg winning the title, right? Like, you didn't give, you didn't give a damn about Goldberg taking the belt. Like, that's not how we don't care about that sort of thing. But as the show sort of finished and you know the dust settled, I was just kind of left thinking, like, what is the point of all this? Like, and I know that's a very heavy question to pose at your professional wrestling viewing, but like, if we're gonna, if we watch the show and in like in March and February they just go. Okay, we're gonna have to retcon all of this to get on these guys. It's it almost feels pointless investing your energy into it to me. But I'm with you. I I almost fear that we're like watching a different show because I see people excited and I'm just I can't get excited for it. I'm trying, but most of this stuff doesn't appeal to me. Maybe that's just a me and you thing. I don't know, but it doesn't feel hot to me either. Let's move on to something that was much hotter yes. than anything happening in WWE. Yes, Cody's neck tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> this actually turned a hot feud into just nothing because all anyone wanted to focus on was, was this neck tattoo from revolution what what was this man thinking joe see here's the thing i think i've got like a skewed perspective on this because i knew about the tattoo and i thought everyone else did i i thought everyone was in on this so he what was the thing that him and the bucks did yeah, well, the, was it like, the panel. Yeah, he he wore the scarf and he yeah. had it like hidden, but you could kind of see the top okay. of it. But it's one thing <clears> to be like, oh yeah, I guess that looks like a neck tattoo. <laughs> no, and then be, he actually comes out and you see like how large it is and everything, and you realize like <laughs> that's actually a neck tattoo. <laughs> So on Saturday night, I saw this tweet where it was like, it broke down the fact that it was probably the Nightmare um, logo, I guess. Nightmare. Yeah, yeah the Nightmare it family. Thank you, yes. And I was like, oh man, that's a dumb tattoo. <laughs> and I just forgot about it. And I didn't watch the show live, so I wasn't watching it with Twitter. So when I saw the tattoo, I was like, yeah, it's dumb tattoo he's got there. Like, I just, it, it didn't even, I realized it was dumb, but I'd already kind of concluded. So I actually watched the match. It seems like when I returned to social media, Everyone was talking about this tattoo, like everyone. So I feel I'm slightly scared on it. It's a uh, it's a bold choice, Jeremy. It's a very bold choice. I want to make it clear that I have no intentions of getting the distractions uh, logo on the side of my neck. <laughs> uh, I want to make it clear now. But yeah, I mean, I'm going to be honest. I had already kind of like just moved on from it by this week's show, Dynamite. I basically stopped paying attention to it. But I sense that everyone else has not because I saw some people saying they couldn't stop looking at it. So... Yeah, I mean, I get it. I just, I was a little bit. I think I had a different view of it. I guess. Do you do you have any tattoos, Joe? I, I don't know. Especially none. No uh, 
bold logos on the side of my neck. Well, I don't have any tattoos. Do you? I have one tattoo on my oh. wrist. It's a let's see, it's a J Infinity sign, and okay. uh, yeah, it's not you know it doesn't really stand out and my wife has the same tattoo but the good news is if something god forbid happens to us my first initial is a j so it can just stand for for me um uh but yeah i i don't know like i'm fine with this this tattoo don't put it on your neck like that like put it on your arm like I I don't did, did you see Brandy's comment where she's like I don't like yeah. it it's a dumb decision and now if I want to make a dumb decision he can't say shit. <laughs> Brandy's awesome. Why did people start pretending Brandy was bad just because she did very bad television segments? Oh. I don't like this. People need to return to the idea that she's awesome. She <laughs> is awesome. But this was a good show, Jeremy. I was very disappointed to see that everyone's response to it was holy shit, look at Cody's tattoo. I thought it was an awesome show. Yeah. And I expected that to be the response, but it wasn't. It was about a tattoo. It, it was a great show. Um, it was. The, the tattoo definitely took away from the, <laughs> the Cody and MJF match. Like, if if you watched yeah. it with the timeline live, that's It all. must be brutal. Yeah. yeah, nobody was talking about the match. It was just, look at Cody's tattoo. Like, what was this man <laughs> thinking? Uh, the the tag team match was was spectacular. The biggest star mm-hmm. in the company, Hangman Page. Uh, wow, red hot. Yeah, uh, Moxley winning the title. What do you make of the decision to to put the belt on Moxley? You think it was the right yeah, call? I think it was definitely. I think I actually, you know, we were just talking about, you know, in the bubble on that business. I actually think sometimes I take for granted how much just wrestling fans love Moxley. Like, it would have actually been foolish not to just put the belt on him. He's Still got so much momentum just from being like this. He's kind of represents a lot of different perceptions and narratives in pro wrestling, right? So he's the guy, man. He's I love Jericho, absolutely love Jericho, and think he's legitimately got like a go argument to a normal person who's a cynic about non WWE wrestling. They will always look at him and be like, "Oh, like he's an old WWE guy," but like Moxley just looks like Dean Ambrose dropped into AW, but he's way better in every way, shape, and form. So. He's very current. He's he's the perfect guy to be champ, I think. And I also think, like we said it last week, right? Who was Chris going to work with next? This opens up a different a different uh, po- set of possibilities. Yeah, they'll they'll do the Jericho rematch at some mm-hmm. point, and maybe that's how as Jericho teased going away for a while. That was clever. That yeah, was clever because he's going on tour, so everyone just assumed, oh, well, that's how it's going to mm-hmm. happen. But maybe the rematch will will set up kind of that same thing. Um, I. I understand why people are like, oh, they just put the title on an X W B guy. Like that's what they are. Like it's different people, it's different characters, it it's the evolution of the just the business and yeah. and those characters. Like um All right, come on, let's be honest, man. Like the people that are saying that if the roster was no X W B guys and the world champ was Sammy Guevara they would have no respect for the roster and call them a bunch of no names. There's some people that just, they don't want to like this stuff. The idea that Mox and Jericho, you would look at them and be like, nah, man, we ain't putting the bell on and they're XWE guys. Come on, we get the story here. They're not putting on Jake Hager, are they? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's Moxley. He's one of the biggest stars. In the last decade of WWE, he was one of their biggest TV stars. So it's just a no-brainer. I think some people get so caught up in this, like, Oh, make your own stars thing. It's like, no, it's a case by case basis. When you get Chris Jericho, it's probably smart to use him as a top guy. You get Moxley, same thing. There's been be other guys that come in that you probably shouldn't put a world title on. That's just the way it's going to work. But these are two top, top stars. So, yeah, I, don't, I think that whole argument is just baseless to me. On the subject of the, the evolution of the business, I yes. was listening to a Matt Hardy interview earlier today. He was on Busted Open Radio, and he just talked hmm. about continuing to evolve his character into something different. And, of course, Matt Hardy is now a free agent. All the, the rumor and speculation and teases have him going to AEW. I think at this point it would be very shocking if he wasn't at, at AEW. Uh, what, what do you make of Matt Hardy going there and now getting that kind of creative freedom that he's longed for? I don't know what you're talking about, and I'm pumped for him to come out and interrupt Edge and Randy Orton at WrestleMania, you know, and like reset, reset his stall. But yeah, um, I'm not going to pretend I'm super excited for this stuff. It's not really like you know, at the absolute peak of the Broken Matt universe, 
it wasn't really for me then, so I'm not like desperate to see it. But Matt is insanely creative, always finds a way to reinvent himself and stay relevant. So I'm very happy for him that he's landed on a major in a major promotion where it will have creative control. I'm excited to see what he does to an extent. I, it's not something I'm desperate for, but I'm I'm always interested in what guys like him. Jericho's the same thing where it's like they just have a knack for finding stuff that works. So I am interested in what he does. I don't think we need to see a ton of Matt Hardy matches in AW, to be honest. <coughs> but there's a lot of guys that will benefit from his the weird like universe building stuff he'll do with his character. So I mean, I'm open to it. I'm open minded to it. I'm not desperate to see it, but I think it'll be cool. I think the thing with, with Hardy is that he does have that creativeness. I can understand how the broken universe isn't for everyone because yeah. it's very – there's some subtleties there. There's some there's some obvious wackiness there. I'm shocked you don't like the broken universe. That that's, It's super wacky the, to where I feel yeah. like you would, have, you would enjoy it. There's some stuff that crosses a line for me where like – I'm watching it and I feel I shouldn't be watching it. That's when I feel I don't like it so much anymore. Like, the broken universe is not something I was desperate to show non-wrestling <laughs> friends of mine, if that makes sense. Like, it's very wink-wink. It's fun. I totally get I'm not one of these guys that was like, my God, the hardest kid in the business, brother. But it just wasn't It wasn't my thing. You know, I'm not as into the wacky wrestling as it, as it may seem on here. I'm just a big Lofa fan. You know, it's different. But, yeah, I, I get it. It's a good sign. And I'm like, do you think... Do we, what kind of matches do you think we're getting from Matt? Are we going to pair him with a young guy? Are I we going to do something like that? Like, what are we going to do here? Th- this is this is when uh, I was listening to this interview. Like, I don't think we're going to get a ton of Matt Hardy matches. Good. I don't think he's Good. going to wrestle. He's definitely not going to wrestle weekly. I don't think he's going to wrestle even as much as, like, Jericho wrestles. Um, because what, what Hardy was essentially saying was that, you know, I'm best utilized as a guy that does like promos and vignettes and, and gets over that way than trying to go out there and wrestle a bunch of matches every night. Mm-hmm. He, he was talking about the the angle they did with Bray Wyatt. And it was like, you know, we had this whole story designed of Bray is going to, he's, he's broken after losing his family and his house burned, burned down and he wanders into the Hardy compound and we take him in and King Maxwell is, is bossing him around and stuff. And he like yeah. laid out this whole plans and he's like, and then they just wanted to wrestle. They wanted us to wrestle like three minute matches on television every week. And it's like, yeah, we, that's not how you best utilize some people like us. And like, I agree with that. Yeah, no, definitely. You know, again, we don't need to turn this into another like WB sucks thing, but they definitely have an issue with like everyone must fit in the same set of premieres, right? Like non promo guys must cut in ring promos, non workers must have 10 minute, two segment matches. That's just the way they do it. It's a very flawed way of doing it, I think. But um, I am interested as to like do you still think the dark order thing is on the table for matt or do you think this is now getting to a point where we could say it's someone else i think it's still on the table for matt Mm -hmm. i think that kind of character and and universe would be pretty perfect for him um yeah and that's a thing where he wouldn't have to wrestle like you can just have grayson and uno do a lot of wrestling you can add an extra person to to that group i mean maybe you add Brody lee to that group to to be kind of your your single star um to to wrestle for them so i i think him being the leader of the dark order is still still kind of where where it's going to end up but uh we'll see you know they've got a few weeks here where we know or we we assume we know lance archer's coming in at some point we assume Brody lee and matt hardy are coming in at some point like all these guys are, are pretty free and clear and it seems like within the next month all three of these guys are gonna be debuting yeah i you know i, I think you're right in the sense that on paper at least the dark order is actually perfect uh, what i think would be interesting is there's a chance they introduce Matt as Matt, like broken Matt, and everyone loves him, and he's doing silly like vignettes from from his place. But then there's a chance that then the twist is he's been pulling the strings rather than because the problem is is if he is revealed as the Dark Order guy, I think there will be some people that either a 
he will get such an insane reaction that it will kind of eclipse any kind of like villainous ploy. And the other side is there are definitely people that are like, we already knew he was here. It's not a big deal. So I'm interested to see how they do that, if they do it. But I am currently leaning towards the idea that he's just going to be his own thing. I think Archer and Brody Lee are going to split the Jake stuff and the Dark Order thing, if that makes sense. I think one is going one way and one's going the other way. Let's talk about Jake Roberts on Dynamite. Let's do it this past Wednesday <coughs> he showed up cut a promo on Cody uh, made a made a Caesar reference I love the ending of the promo oh, it was amazing where yeah he's like never turn your back on a man you respect or fear and he did that as he turned his back on Cody just great stuff from Jake Crowder. the man can still cut a promo despite his age and everything he's gone through in the business yeah, the voice actually makes this even more tremendous, right? Like that, he felt like a like a legitimate film character here, and I mean that in the nicest way possible. Because so often, like in wrestling, characters feel, you know, it's intentionally goofy, right? It's pro wrestling. Don't take it seriously. But in this case, Jake felt like a guy that was legitimately to be feared, not because of what he can do physically, just because of where he was at mentally. And I. This was awesome. I had no, obviously, no one had any expectations of this. But when Jake came out, I thought we were going to get another, like, legend gives Jake, uh, gives Cody a pep talk kind of thing. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, focus on something else or something. I didn't expect this to turn into an angle on its own. Um, so, yeah, I, you know, a segment was good when it, for the rest, after you watch it for the next few hours, you keep thinking about it, like, where's that headed? You know what was you know what was the uh, the impact of it? I the question then becomes who is the guy? Who is the client? Do you think Jake was just going off the cuff when he said the dark side is coming? Because that was a little bit like I'm sure the dark order guys were devastated about that. <laughs> the dark I, side is coming, you know. Yeah, I don't know if he was going off the cuff. I mean, Cody is admittedly a big Star Wars fan, and I, yes, I wonder true. if. They just had them work in just like a Star Wars reference as so Cody could essentially pop himself during the promo. Yes. So he could be Luke Skywalker, yeah. effectively. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I I would imagine that, you know, we're going to get Lance Archer, as you said, and Brody Lee out of this, and they're going to kind of split between Dark Order and Jake Roberts. I think Lance Archer is going to be Jake Roberts' guy. So do I. The yeah. weird thing is... Lance was advertised for this show. And here's the thing. Mm -hmm. People want to be like, oh, it was never advertised. They said they would have. He was. (laughs) If you you go on the the social media account, like I did the article, it literally said Lance Archer will be in Denver for AEW Dynamite. Like it said Lance Archer will be there. And then they deleted the tweet at some point within the last week. So at some point they realized all right, we're going to change directions and not have Lance Archer there. But he was promoted Definitely. last week for this week's show. I would suggest, without getting too inside baseball here, Jeremy, that the angle, there was a lot of talk. I'd imagine there was a suggestion that the angle ended with Archer, is what I would have seen. You know, like Jake's talking, never to turn your back, that, that line. And then Archer comes from behind and takes Cody out. But I think perhaps there is a chance that someone realized that they have about 10 weeks to the next pay-per-view and there is no reason to eclipse Jake being there. If that makes sense. You can actually take like drag this out. That's what I would assume because I think Brody Lee is going to be a dark older guy. And the reason I think that is because I think he can actually cut promos. Unlike, you know, I know it probably will surprise people, but I think he can. And I think the dark older thing will unlock like a different side to him rather than being a follower. He can be the leader of that weird cult thing. Whereas I think Archer needs the help that Jake provides. Not not necessarily necessary from a promo perspective. I haven't seen enough of Lance's promos to say that. I'm just saying he's not like a name to the degree that Brody is, right? So or you know, I shouldn't say name because no one will know that. But when they see Luke Harper, they'll recognise him. Is my point. Archer would benefit greatly from having the Jake seal of approval and coming in in an angle. That will help him a lot. Um, I don't know how long the Jake like how long he intends to be a part of this. But every week he is, is really kind of an awesome moment, I think, because like, I'm, you know, I have no nostalgia for Jake. I wasn't watching when Jake was, was riding higher, but this is an amazing story that he's here. And he not only is here, he may have cut 
possibly my favorite promo of 2020 so far. This promo was awesome. And he did it after basically doing nothing on like wrestling television for decades, really effectively, you know? So, um, yeah, I, that's where I think we're going. But just as a segment standalone, this was amazing. AEW is, is very good at utilizing legends like mm-hmm. this. Like you've got, I guess, outside of Tully Blanchard, who I don't know what they're doing with him. Yeah. And Sean yeah, Spears. But like the Arn Anderson stuff is good. They bring in DDP for a handful of matches. Like they just, they get guys to come in, make a cameo. Like the, the Rock and Roll Express did, did their match and everything. But they make a cameo. Maybe they have a match. I, I would assume Jake Roberts is not having no. any kind of a match. But they, you know, they and they typically put somebody over in some aspect. Like they're just they're not coming in, beating someone, and then heading out. Yeah, I, I'm going to mention this because you just brought it up. So I, I do want to actually delve into it. The Tully Sean Spears thing is kind of odd, right? Like I don't know if you saw. Um, Sean Spears interview with Chris Van Fleet, but he like clearly is content with what's going on, and he loves the fact he just gets to wrestle. But no knock on him, but it, just, it does feel like a strange spot for Tully Blanchard to be in. Like he's doing like this angle where where Sean Spears is looking for a tag partner on AEW Dark, and that just feels I don't know. Maybe I think Tully's a bigger deal than the general audience does, or something. I don't know. It just feels like a weird spot for him to be in. I think that that's my issue. Is I because they have been so good at utilizing mm. these guys. And then Tully is just, is just there with Sean Spears yeah. and it's on dark for most week. And it does. I don't know what the end game is of who Sean Spears, partner is going to end up being, but it, it feels like it's gone on forever. And I don't think it has, it just, it feels yeah. like, and it, and because it's on dark every week, like no one's really seeing this stuff. I know they did a, quick little promo on dynamite that basically said hey i'm still searching for a partner and i would imagine most of the audience is like when did you start searching for a partner <laughs> the other problem is is that like this imagine he gets a partner that's similar to him very good you know solid wrestler and together as a team with tully they could be unlocked to some <laughs> kind of tandem but like in that tag division it's what is even the end game there? There's so many great tag teams that are waiting for their chance to be a central team. Like, what's the Sean Spears team going to be? I don't know. I guess we should let it play out. But I agree with you. It feels strange that it's hard to see where it's where the payoff is, I guess. Let's talk about the, the greatest man to ever grace AEW Dark and AEW okay. in general. Yeah. Luther. <laughs> yes. Japanese deathmatch legend. The original yeah. Death Dealer, Luther, mm-hmm. undefeated in AEW, defeated Thanks. Sonny Kiss at yeah. on AEW Dark this past week before the the pay per view. On I guess I guess it aired on Friday night. Joe, Lu- when's the title shot coming? He's undefeated. Well, look, I don't want to step on your gimmick, Jeremy. I know you got a lot of sources in AEW, but I've been speaking to some people. Okay, <laughs> I know that Mox is big on the Death Match deal. I think it's pretty obvious where this is headed, right? So I'm not going to, you know, we've spoken about it before. I don't want to spoil anything else. So um, this was a tremendous moment for the Distraction Podcast, Jeremy. I, mean, I think we should actually celebrate this. We should take some time to take our flowers now. We have had a massive victory here. We started this when Luther was simply a Japanese deathmatch legend. And after however many weeks we've been doing this, he is now the original death dealer, which I think is actually... I must say, a tremendous nickname. It's actually better than Japanese Deathmatch Legend, but I'll never call him anything by that. So, um, massive win. I assume he's on the rankings, right? He should be at least in the top one. So, um, I'm very excited to see his match with Moxley that will definitely main event at least three pay-per-views this year. I, it should. Look, Moxley and Luther is the big money match. I, I don't know... I mean, what else are you, you building towards... Be besides that like what else is i mean you could do you more money than that i think you could do luther and jericho because i think there's a story to be told there to be quite frank jeremy i'm gonna be honest uh, it might not have the death match potential the moxley one does but either way there's one constant in all of these and and they do say vegas they call it you know it's the, it's the big fight city the capital of the fight world but it's not seen too many death matches, and I think that needs to change soon. You know, that's the big pay per view. I think we know where we're headed here. 
And I'm not going to, um, I don't want to step on any toes, Jeremy, but I would like to, I would like to be invited to that pay-per-view. I'm going to just say that, okay? And I, in fact, I think me and you should do commentary for that match. That's what I'm saying. I, I fully agree with this. I mean, look, yes. Luther, there's no two bigger Luther supporters than us. We, yes. this podcast w- was founded on the week of Luther's appearance. We've, yep. we've discussed Luther every week he's been on television, even weeks that he hasn't been on television. We, yes. We've discussed Luther because this man just completely transcends all of wrestling. Yeah. I mean, in all seriousness, this is actually kind of awesome. And if I, I have, in the time we've been doing this podcast, delved into the history of Lufa, and it is somewhat incredible that, like, here he is on AEW, and he was introduced to Japanese Deathmatch Legend, and now he's just winning matches on Dark as his own uh, commodity, and he has his own nickname now. Not just Japanese Deathmatch Legend, which is, like, just how he's known generally. They've actually given a brand. So you know what comes after the brand, Jeremy, is T-shirt. So what I will say is, if we're not going to go to Vegas to commentate the match, we definitely deserve T-shirts, okay? That's what I will say, because, I mean, granted, it doesn't say the, the Jeff, Japanese deathmatch legend, but, you know, realistically, does that shirt exist without us? Probably not, but we'll give him credit for now. It should, I mean, it should say Japanese deathmatch legend. It, it should, should say both, yeah. Yeah, it should, it should just say all of it. Like, I don't want any <laughs> fancy, you know, fancy t-shirt like sometimes these t-shirts i don't i don't like a lot of wrestling t-shirts actually i won an aew shirt off of a bet this past week and i just gave it to a follower because i figured i saw this yeah yeah, they i figured they would appreciate it more than i would like what am i gonna wear these i think your exact words were i don't wear shirts (laughs) was it not was that a real thing you tweeted or do i imagine yeah yeah people were people were like wait what do you mean you don't wear shirts (laughs) And I was like, I never leave my parents' basement, bro. Like, I don't need to wear shirts. Um, I, I, like, I, I don't have a use for a lot of wrestling shirts. But a Luther shirt, one, I do agree that, I mean, we should be sent the yes. the very first Luther shirts because, look, you can call us co-opted if you... We are co-opted we are, with we are Luther. Co-opted. Like, yeah. we, 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 are. Make, we make no bones about that. Like, that's our guy. That's our... We are the original Death Dealer supporters. <laughs> yes, so, yes, we are. Yes. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I, we... I would also say, um, after the recent developments, I'm very excited for Luther's action figure, which is definitely coming at some point. Right? Come on. Yeah. We need this. I'm not an action figure guy, but I will become one for the original Death Dealer, the Japanese Deathmatch legend. Perhaps the T-shirt can be one of them ones where, like, you turn it in and out, and it has the opposite naming on it not to you know we don't want to call any of the audience you know i i i like that so yeah, yeah it's a reversible yes shirt oh yeah. man it's, it's got versatility just like luther has as a talent you know we've got to get these trade these uh nicknames trademarked as well look True. i don't know if they when i did a search a while ago no, this trademark was not um the, these nicknames were not trademarked we got to file these. AEW, because yeah. we can beat AEW to the punch here. Oh, I think we should start a promotion. That's what I'm saying now. And I, <laughs> I'm i not going to commit to it until I see the audience reaction. But with Lufa as our centerpiece, there's a lot that we can achieve, I feel, personally. Yeah. Will AEW sanction the title match between Moxley and and Luther? Because they, they copped out on Moxley and Omega. And I mean, Omega, yeah. you know... Who's he, who's he ever beat? He's not a Japanese deathmatch legend. He's just a no. you know Japanese. He's a best bout machine. He's a Japanese V legend or yeah. something. But yeah, yeah, Japanese nerd. There you go. I like that. Yeah. Um. But they wouldn't <laughs> sanction that. I don't know how they're gonna sanction Luther. They probably wouldn't because they're too scared of what we all know will happen. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, in fact, would they even air that match? Do they really want Mox to be squashed in two minutes? Like, really, is that what they want to be doing on pay-per-view? Probably not. They're probably too scared. So I guess we'll have to hear that, right? We'll live stream it, Jeremy. Yeah. <laughs> live streaming on the distraction. We're doing the commentary, yes. Luther against Moxley. Mox will do it. I think if you just give Mox a chance to do any kind of death match, I think he would do one live on our podcast to no audience, I think. 100%. 100% Moxley would just, if you tell him, hey, you want to do a death match? I don't think he cares who he's wrestling or who... who yeah is potentially going to be watching he'll just be like yep sure let's do it (laughs) okay it sounds good it sounds like a plan 
<laughs> have you seen that they just announced the nwo uh is gonna be on a moment of bliss on smackdown oh no you did not just tell me that please <laughs> tell me you're taking the mick out of me bro yeah. no. is that seriously true and they did the graphic you know they got the photoshop graphic where kevin nash is a uh, hugging waltman and scott hall and they got bliss photoshopped next to them it's so bad it's so why bad. is this happening dude? Like, <laughs> what is actually going on do we know no. why is this a thing why is alexa just a talk show host i have no clue what's going on well she wanted her mic back so she's getting yeah, it. yeah can i talk about that quickly jeremy because sure. i have a mic um people are being incredibly obtuse when they react to those tweets with you have a talk show if you watch those talk show segments you will understand what the point is, okay? It's been like three months since she came back. She's not got an actual wrestling promo. It does not count when you just stand there and go, please cheer for the Bella Twins. It's not a real thing, okay? He has a microphone. We understand that literally she has a microphone, Jeremy, but there's too many people that don't understand the difference between what whatever that segment is supposed to now be and cutting an actual promo about being a pro wrestler. But I'm very upset that I was told this live on air and uh, it sounds awful. You know, I mean, I definitely think it's a good idea to prioritise a Lacey Evans uh, babyface run over, you know, and have Alexa as a talk show host. Sounds good to me, man. What What is Alexa going to do at WrestleMania? I don't know, probably have, like, someone on a talk show, I guess, in hour 12. <laughs> I don't know, look, in all seriousness, um, this deal with Beth and Natalia wrestling for tag titles, am I the only one that thinks it's absolutely insane while her husband, like, in storyline, is wrestling a match for his life? Or am I just crazy? I don't get it. It doesn't like, matter. Like, it's... Like, like, <laughs> you know, in the segment with Beth and Randy, they had the line where, like, Randy basically said, Edge can't wrestle anymore, right? Yeah. So in storyline, when they have this match, which will be like a no holds barred match, I assume. Um, I hope, anyway. Edge will effectively, in storyline, be putting his life on the line. That's how dangerous this is. And you want me to watch... His wife, who just got RKO, just have like a cold tag title match on the pre-show. No, sir. I don't, I'm not having it. So I would like for her to be in a tag title match, Jeremy, but she'll probably be interviewing um, the original Def Dealer <laughs> in a moment of bliss in his debut in WWE. That's my take. God, if Luther can't go to WWE, they, they, they will strip everything great about him. Wow, um, you're so defeated, right? This is amazing. <laughs> The, the thing with Beth and Natalia getting this tag, it's, it's just another match that they're just going to do for the sake of doing. Like, there's yeah. no real setup to it that's been teased past. I mean, I guess Natalia can do something in the chamber with Asuka. On yeah, but Sunday, that stuff's already but... kind of going, right? Like, right. it's like, I just, my only thing is I don't get why... If that's the Mania match, I don't get why they haven't done Kabuki versus Electra and Nikki in the meantime, if that makes sense. Like, they've just not touched on it at all. And I understand it's different brands, but the point of the belts is supposed to be, oh, I don't know. I don't know with these belts, man. I honestly really intended to care, and they've just refused to let me, so I'm not I'm not paying any more attention to it. It's terrible. I hate it. It's like that with many things. And to yeah, to be... it is. Uh, last topic, as always, we close the show with some basketball talk. I tweeted earlier this week, and our, our good friend Jack Crosby from uh, CBS Sports responded as well. I tweeted, Top guy. Top guy. He, he is, is a very good person. I worked with him uh, at Fansided for a while before he before he got promoted up to, to CBS Sports because Jack oh, wow. is big time now. The but big he still, still makes time for us. Like, he that, does, That's yeah. how you know. I mean, you're a big star. I'm not so much, but... True, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I tweeted that the most patient people in the world are just people who can defend anything WWE. And it was just, like, not anything, like everything WWE. And it was part yeah. of my just... I have been broken by this company over the last week. And and I said, them and Knicks fans. So the Knicks, according to Frank Isola, they are gathering intel on all-star Chris Paul and could make a run at him this summer. Joseph, Chris Paul and the Knicks. How's that going to work? Three weeks before hamstring injury. <laughs> like, 
this is one of them situations where, as a franchise, you need to understand the way things work for you and do everything in your power to avoid allowing that stuff to happen. And the worst thing you can do when everything has gone a certain way in the history, or in the very least the last 30 years, 20 years at least, of your franchise, do not trade for a 35-year-old point guard that has like two, maybe, is it three more years left for his player option? How many years is left after this? Uh, I think it's two years after this. Okay, two years left with the second one being at like $44 million. Yeah. And he has injury issues in the past. Now, I understand he's been in great condition this year and he's playing great. But even still, what is actually the upside of that? I have no idea what the point of this is. The first I've heard of it is you just telling me this, by the way. I, I didn't actually know this was a real thing. Um, but I do think, in fairness, Knicks fans are definitely more patient than the first group of people you're talking about. As crazy as they both are, Knicks fans are. They're soldiers, I think. Knicks fans are... The thing I love about Knicks fans is they just think everything, like they stick with the team and they think everything will, will work out because like you're the Knicks. But when was something like, when did, when is something work? They traded Chris Tapp's Porzingis because they thought they were going to get Durant and Kyrie, at least one of them. And then both of them just went across, across the street, went to Brooklyn and now they're they're playing for for Brooklyn. Like they thought they were gonna get LeBron. They thought they were gonna get Wade. They they, they think they're gonna get every. I'm sure in a couple of years they think they're gonna get Giannis. Like, there's no evidence that anybody wants to play for this team. Okay, is there actually an argument? <clears throat> As you laid this out, I just thought about this. So, is there an argument that Knicks fans are actually TNA Impact fans? Like in a lot of ways, they just suffer willingly. And, like, there's always, like, a light at the end of the tunnel, right? It's eventually something will happen. And then, in the end, it all ends up with us all quote-tweeting something with, you know, <laughs> laughing at it. Is that really the actual link here to pro wrestling? Because it might be, I think. Yeah, I could buy that. I could buy yeah. that. When, when I talked about patience is, you know, WWE fans are always mentioning, like, oh, let, just let's see how it plays out. And, you know, you got everything you wanted last year at WrestleMania. And, you know, they're they're clearly doing this and that. And it's like, no, like, can you not see that they don't have a plan on any of this stuff? I guess the Knicks, like, in their minds have a plan. It's just yeah. none of it actually works. Is this the point of the show where I announced that I can't cancel my WWE Network subscription? Because <laughs> it might be. Because you're the one who's coming across like you're broken, but I actually cancelled my subscription like I was doing a hashtag of some some did kind. You really? Yeah, I actually did. I I on um what was when was this? I have no idea what happened to me. I'm pretty sure it happened to you as well, which makes me worried. <laughs> some point after I spoke about that pay per view on Thursday, I was just like, I'm done, dude. I'm done, <laughs> I'm finished, I'm finished. I actually nearly messaged you saying like just tell me segments that we're going to talk about and I'll pretend to watch the rest. <laughs> and in the end, I got around to watching it. But I just, I don't know. I've hit, I've, hit a, I've hit a wall. I've done the equivalent of the Knicks fans that went to Barclays instead this year and just said enough is enough. I've done that. I bought the pay-per-view AW and said, that's it, I've changed allegiance. <laughs> Finally been co-opted officially, you know? It's... <sighs> Look, if the Knicks, first off, as a Thunder fan, if the Knicks want Chris Paul, throw us your draft picks. Because yes. they're going to be very good draft picks. Oh, man. The they Knicks can't do this, dude. They cannot do this. They're good. They, yeah, give us all your first round picks. Look, the Chris Paul trade has been great. Uh, the mm -hmm. the Russell Westbrook Paul George partnership, it wasn't going to work. Chris Paul's been better than really anyone expected this year. We got draft picks in that deal as well. So it's not like it was a one for one swap. Like OKC built on their future with the picks. If they want Chris Paul, like they don't have anybody that OKC is going to be like, yeah, we we want this guy back. Like I don't think Dennis Smith Jr. Is oh no, part. like he's not salvageable no. uh, right yeah. now. Yeah, like everyone else is on like a one year contract. I think Randall's on a one year deal. They they traded uh, Marcus Morris, like Taj Gibson, like Kevin Knox. I don't know if he's any good. R.J. Barrett might be good, but I don't think they're trading Barrett for for Chris Paul. I think R.J. Barrett's like the one guy. Yeah. actually want to keep so yeah give, give us give us dennis smith jr and and your draft picks. don't take dennis smith jr <laughs> look you can take him we can flip him for for something else like what whatever but 
Get, give us all your first round. What about the big man, the shot blocker, Mitchell Robinson? What about him? I think they would want to keep him, too, I would okay. imagine. I See, That's the fair. thing is, yeah. I, I don't think OKC is going to be, like, asking for a ton in a Chris Paul trade. Like, no. you, you give, like, because the Knicks will have the cap space for him because they have so many expiring deals. Um, but you, you just get some first-round picks out of it, and like that's the end game for the Thunder. Like, they're not trying to be good next year. They're trying to be good five years from now. I'm trying to think about what the plan would be for them. For the so Knicks? Like, yeah. Get Chris like, Paul and then yeah. hope that he can do what he did in OKC, except with far less talent around Is him. Is there maybe, like, the idea that, so next summer... There's like three agents, right? <coughs> Are we going to do that song and dance again where they pretend like, oh, we can we can get some guys this time around because we have Chris Paul to attract them? Is that what the thing is going to be, do you think, maybe? That would be tremendous if it is. Oh, 100%. Like, they're going to... Yeah. Like, the free agent class isn't good this year. It's like DeRozan no. and uh, that's like it. There's, there's really no one. And Anthony Davis, but he's going to resign in LA anyway. Um, or is he? MSG awaits, Jeremy. <laughs> Chris Paul, Anthony Davis, pick and roll. Let's go. <laughs> um, I mean, that would be something if Anthony it would. Davis. It would. I can't imagine him not resigning nope. in LA. Um, but the following year, like, there's Giannis, and I, I don't. Giannis isn't. He doesn't want to go there. <laughs> like, no, no. There's a reason nobody wants to actually go to that franchise. Like, it's it's not well run. They haven't done anything in years it's just but hey if you want them send us those draft picks new york now there's no plan it, the plan is you know because they hired i guess the the new um executive is you know chris paul's um oh okay <laughs> i didn't realize this link okay yeah his agent or his former agent i guess um leon rose so i guess that's okay. the link that's there um yeah I, the Knicks don't have a plan. They don't. Yeah. Yeah, that could be a disaster. I mean, I hope it is because, you know, for comedic <laughs> value, for comedic value, it could be very funny, but I, that feels like the exact thing they should not be doing at any cost, to be honest with you. All right, Joe, let's wrap things up here as I go into a yes. coughing spell at the end of the show. Where can they find you on Twitter? Joe Hall, but five, I remind you I am co-opted, so... Do not, you know, follow, follow me if you would get upset by that kind of thing. But yeah, I'm on there. We're pretty calm these days, Jeremy. I don't know if you've noticed. I try to pretty calm. I'm not going to get angry about a moment of bliss with NWO. <laughs> not going to do it. Because it'll be fun. I'm up for it. I'm excited. I'm ready. Oh, yeah, Lecture and Hogan have got great chemistry on screen. We saw it at WrestleMania. So I'm very excited. Uh, we're in a good place. I love everything WWE's doing right now. They're firing on all cylinders. Luther's rolling in AEW. I can't wait for him to, you know, jump ship. Um... That's it, man. I've got nothing else to add. And there's no features this week either, so I haven't actually got any good work to like plug. Yeah. You can find me on Twitter at Jeremy Lambert eighty eight. I have to do the power rankings. I'm behind on those because of uh, my death spell. The the original death dealer Luther got to me. I was so excited by by Luther that I was like, This is it. Wrestling can't get any better. So he's gonna deal me <laughs> death now. Wow, this is actually trying to add up now that I think about it. It just took a while to get to you, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. Um, we are here on The Distraction every single Thursday. Sometimes we change days, I guess, but most Thursdays. Uh, at 7 o'clock on Fightful. Fightful.com, wrestling, MMA, boxing. Fightful Select, best way to support us. Exclusive news, extra audio, early access to uh, columns and features and, and things of that such. Get Alex, uh, sign up for Fightful Select. You get Alex Pawlowski sour graps where he hates WWE worse than me right now. So Yeah, we just stole his gimmick. Yeah. We should send him some money. We kind of just did his, his deal for an hour there. That was unfair, you know? Look, I subscribe to Fightful Select, so I, he's okay. getting my money in that regard. Okay. By the way, I didn't get any offers. No one sent me a, a message saying they'll pay $100 for my features. <laughs> so I don't know if I didn't say it loud enough or someone was – but they are uh, still on the table, okay? Now, granted, Jeremy said he might you know, kind of do some, some uh, rival bidding there in that case, but still on the table, open to be bought at all times. If you want Joe's features early, send them a hundred dollars. I feel I mean, yes. that's a fair bet. Those those features they would go for at least five hundred on eBay. 
So yeah, the fact I should start auctioning him at an art gallery, I think, Jeremy. Yeah. The <laughs> fact that you can just message him directly and get him for 100 that's pretty. that's a pretty good deal. I agree. Yeah, I think it's very fair on my part, actually. We'll be back next week talking <laughs> Elimination Chamber. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, that's what we'll be talking about. <laughs> oh, God. Get excited, everyone. We'll talk to everybody next week.